Hello and welcome. I'm Nafe42 and in this episode I'm going to do a brief review on the Prusa i3 Mark III. Okay, so I am a couple of days into using the printer pretty much full time and I've got to say the results I've been getting from this printer are pretty amazing. Uh, in comparison to what the um, e, uh, the a 8 was making this one is leaps and bounds better and so much easier to use I don't know why uh, I didn't do this sooner um, it's printing right now I'm, I'm printing things for my cousins and stuff like that um, such as this watch holder for one of my cousins it's a pretty cool design um, and it just came out flawlessly. This is how it came off the bed. Um, there's no string in. Maybe a very slight little bit of an issue there because I printed it that way. So there's a very slight bridging, maybe bridging issue at the top up here. But you know, that's kind of to be, to be expected and it's not anything too severe. But the weight to it, the, the Prusa filament, Kudos to that, the silver, it's a very nice filament actually, it's a very good filament to use. I will start off with a few test prints that I did. Now, after calibrating the printer, getting everything ready and everything like that, there was a few issues with getting the Z calibration correct. These aren't really issues, if you know what I mean, they, they, they're just issues that I was having, they're not major issues with the printer or anything like that. But it wanted me to, it says in the book to go up to a millimeter down. I think I had to go to 1.1 millimeter or something like that as the Z depth difference. It's not a huge deal. Um, and you know, uh, I could just move the probe up, reconfigure everything again. But it does seem to be working even with that difference uh, being over a millimeter. So I'm just going to leave it the way it is at the moment because the prints that are coming out of it are actually really good. I don't know if you can see in the background, but it is printing right now this is on normal mode uh, now I don't know what you guys can normally hear with my ANA A8 if that's printing but it's probably pretty loud I'll stick on stealth mode and very soon it'll switch into stealth mode and it is 10 times quieter so it is very very quiet I'd say even in, well, in stealth mode, I can probably sleep with the printer on. And my bed is literally two feet away from the printer. I, had, I didn't have any issues with doing that the other day. Uh, now, there are some very cool print files that come on the SD card that comes with the printer. Uh, what, well, this isn't actually one of them, <laughs> strangely enough. But it is a one centimeter cube. I have checked and it is uh one well one centimeter on all sides uh maybe point one point zero zero one out on one side um but maybe if I change this down to the layer height of fifty microns or a hundred microns it would fix that but this is point two so this is kind of like a rough draft um as per their slicing software the slicing software that comes with this stuff is really good although I've got to say I did have a very strange issue, I don't know if anyone else had this as well. I downloaded the file and as it was downloading it was corrupted. So I had to re-download the file the next day and then it worked. I don't know if maybe there's a, a temporary issue with the servers or something like that, but that is something that did happen. Not that it was a bad thing, it was resolved afterwards, but yeah, you know. So if we look at some of my early prints, um, this is probably this bat knife thing here, I think this is the, the second or the third print that came off of my printer. Now the bottom layer of this is okay, but there are a few little divots, a few uh, missing lines and stuff like that. And that was because the bed wasn't pushing enough. Um, and it may have came uncalibrated as well because I moved it from the desk which was here to the desk here. So if you're moving the printer from any place to another place, it's best to do all calibrations again, just to make sure that it will, it, that just to make sure that it's all good when you transfer it over. Now Marvin came out really good. Um, 
I pretty much can't fault it. There may be a few bits on there which uh, need to be a bit better for next time. I might try and reprint it. And I'll do that for the for the one week after video just to see how it goes. Um, but yeah, I think Marvin came out perfectly fine. I think with very minor touch-ups, because actually I just realized that I'm rubbing at these parts which seem to be issues, it's actually kind of rubbing away. So it might just be a tiny bit of like overstringing on them areas. And there's a tiny bit on top, extra, just over the eye over here as well. Definitely not the worst. It's, it's, well, I mean, literally it's the best one I've ever done. So there we go. I printed the Dragon. Now, just so you know, I, I don't have a uh, time-lapse printer, uh, time-lapse camera set up for this just yet. So I am just using no time-lapse, uh, actually, because there is no time-lapse thing to do it. Uh, this came out very well. Uh, and I didn't actually know this before, but the inside is actually empty. So it is actually kind of like a dragon's belly in there. So you can actually, uh, I don't know, stick water in there and then pour it up and it'll actually flow back out. Uh, I've not tried that, but you, I'm guessing you probably could. The bottom layer was not perfect um, on the pause, uh, but I think this was also done before I readjusted the Z layer. But uh, I mean, other than that, everything else on this came out incredible. The detail in the wings uh, is, is really nice. Um, I did notice a very strange kind of ripple effect on the back of this wing on the back of this wing up here. Uh, I'm not sure if that is a bad thing or not. Um, I've noticed that the firmware is out of date as well, so I need to update the firmware at some point. Um, may maybe that's a thing, maybe that's a thing with that. This is a test that was not on the printer. Um, I haven't done some of the other tests as well, but I will do them for the, um, for the one week after test. Um, now when the bottom layer is perfect you can move your finger over here and it feels like glass it feels like you're stroking glass it's incredible the bottom layer for this came out perfectly now what did not come out perfectly was this bit at the top here um, what happened there was uh, it didn't well the, the, this bit from over here didn't stick to the floor so if I wanted to print this part perfectly, I'd have to use probably some kind of that thing where like a raft or, or something like that. But other than that, can't fault it. It's, it's a really nice print. Uh, it printed, I don't know why the test is like this. It's meant to be a torch test. But it has a box, it had loads of sticks here. There's absolutely no stringing in there. It printed the uh, circle, the hex and the other two really small circles perfectly. Great print. I did try to do a very small miniature print. This didn't come out very well, uh, but I think it's because I, uh, I printed it the wrong way. So it would have been okay. I printed this in 50 microns as well. So, I mean, it's a very, it would have been a very detailed print. And you know, the parts that did come through, it does look great. It does look really good. But a lot of it did not come through very well. Um, and I don't know how or what to do to get rid of the extra bits around the outside. I just don't know how you can really do it. The bottom layer, perfect, perfect. It feels great. Uh, I mean, even the shoulder little cap bit here feels great. But the rest of it is all really, really messy. And it's because I used supports on this one. Maybe I should need to fl flip it upside down and try supports that way. Maybe that way they'll just it'll just pull out and you can just kind of pop it off. That would be great if that is how it works, but I don't actually know that one. Now, in a, just to show you guys how easy it is to get stuff off the bed on this. This is just printed. I'll give it a slight yank. It didn't want to come off straight away. So what I do is just lift off this plate. You can just... You can just freaking do that, and then there's the print. <laughs> there's no, no issue. And look at that. I mean, even the freaking little brim bit prints perfectly, and it comes off just, just like that. Just, just like that. I've never seen that in a print before. And look, to put it back, you do need to be very careful. 
I'm not going to lie. Uh, because it is magnets and it does it does want to snap its way down so yeah be careful with that when you do anything uh, but yeah now I printed this with the brim so it's gonna be a bit of a pain but hopefully not too bad and here I can put, compare this to one that I did on the last printer, the Aina A8. And you can see like the layers are so, so, so much better. Uh, it's very slightly taller as well. Or shorter, I can't quite tell actually, it's one or the other. I know it's about the same, it is about the same. But there is definitely like a bit missing out of the Aina. And this one's more full and to the edge, you know, it's, it just prints really, really good. So, so far, I guess you've probably seen and heard what I've just said. If not, then it's uh, pointless, this video even being here. Um, but yeah, so far with this printer, I'm really enjoying it. I'm really liking the amount of stuff that I can do with it. I like how it is increasing my abilities to print so I added a little bit of plastic stuck under the, under the plate and I, I really enjoy just using it it's very very simple to use I didn't think I would go back to a card based system where you have to put the card in and then have to put the card into the computer but previously I hadn't used any kind of software which is as, as well really intuitive as uh, Prusa Control I think it's called the software is very good, actually. You can just drag and drop a file into it. It will show you the file. You say what detail you want to print it in. Oh, no, gener generate G-code. And then it will generate the G-code. It will remember where the card was. So you can just click save to card. It will save it to the card. And then you plug it back into here and you print. Now, obviously, you don't get the added benefits of that, where you get to you know, like, see the print and you can test the temperatures and all that kind of stuff uh, away from the computer. But it still does work really well. Uh, and that is really cool um, but yeah I'm gonna leave it here this has been a a bit longer than I thought actually for a review for the Prusa but yeah anyway don't forget to subscribe let me think follow me on Twitter that's at Nathan42 leave a comment in the section below if you have any questions about the Prusa or if you want me to try anything else new with the Prusa and I will get to them as soon as possible I'm really enjoying the print so far so Throw at me what you can and I'll try and make it happen with the prudence.